<laughs> this is going to be a motion clarity comparison at 60 FPS between my LG C1 and the Samsung S95C when using clear motion on the Samsung and OLED Motion Pro High on the LG C1. Now, I already know who is going to win and the difference is almost impossible to show on YouTube, but I can explain you exactly what's going on and that's the reason why I already knew who was going to win before even testing the TVs. But what I was not expecting at all and the thing that is mind blowing about this comparison and it is something that I can actually show you on YouTube is the brightness difference. This is unbelievable and it shows you how good is the technology that the LG C1 is using to improve the motion. It is far superior than what Samsung is doing here and far superior to what this new OLED monitors are doing with black frame insertion because the LG C1 is not actually just inserting black frames when using this setting. It is, do it is doing something more advanced that allows the TV to get more brightness for the motion clarity improvement, okay? And we can clearly see it in this comparison. Now, as I already showed you, the Samsung S95C is significantly brighter than the LG C1 and it is not even close. So you would expect, if the motion clarity is not as good as 60, and it is significantly brighter, of course, when using that feature, it's gonna blow the C1 out of the water and it's not gonna be even close. Now, it is brighter, but just a little bit. And that is shocking. That was shocking to me, for me to see that difference. I was like, no way. Oh, there has to be something wrong here. So let me show you the settings I am using. Right now, the game is playing on the Samsung S95C, okay? So in-game settings are tuned for the tone mapping of the Samsung S95C. And that's why I have a picture here on the LG C1. So right now I am tuning the game to 1200 nits with the paper white max out. This is just for this game, it's kind of messed up. We shouldn't have to do that, but for this game, you have to do that to get actually the brightness you're setting here. But now for the C1, the picture I have is actually set to 600, 649 nits. And as you can see here, well, it's very small. The max CLL is 649 nits. So basically I took a screenshot of the game and I am using on the C1, let me show you the settings. I am using dynamic tone mapping to get as much brightness as possible. Dynamic tone mapping. And I am using mastering pick max CLL 700. Okay, which is the closest to that 649 to get as much brightness as possible. And on the Samsung, these are not my recommended settings, by the way. I am just showing you that I am not holding back on brightness at all. I'm trying to push all the brightness possible, okay? Which is not the best way. I'm gonna share with you the best settings, in my opinion, to use this feature to reduce flickering perception and to get a brighter full screen. So I'll share that with you on another video. But for now, I just want to prove my point, which is basically how suboptimal is black frame insertion for OLEDs. It makes no sense. We have to use a technology like this to get it brighter and to get it more to be more clear, okay? That's the point of this video. So as you can see here, I am using active tone mapping. And on top of that, of course, I have peak brightness and high. And I have 1200 nits set on the game, okay? 
So this is as bright, oh, supposedly as bright as it's going to get, okay? And as you can see, the brightness difference is very small. Very, very small. It's unbelievable. So now, what is the motion clarity? So how good is the motion? Very simple for the Samsung S95C or any of these Samsung QD OLEDs. We have 60 FPS on the game. We set the console or PC to 60 Hertz output, but the TV is actually at 120 Hertz when you use this feature. And what the TV is doing is inserting a black frame in between those 60 frames. So you actually have 120 frames, but there's one black frame in between. So the result, so why is the TV doing that? The TV is doing that to reduce the frame visibility time in half. And by reducing the frame visibility time in half, you are doubling the motion clarity. It's that simple, based on the Blur Buster's law. But now what the LG C1 is doing, by the way, I don't like to babysit my TV. I actually have um, the dimming off of my LG C1, but yeah, I don't like it when it is so long with the same picture. So let's take care of the C1 here for a moment. And let me, let me change the size of that window. Okay, so what's going on with the LG C1? Actually, let me do this. I'm gonna change to the LG C1 here to explain you this. And again, the motion clarity difference is not as big, so you can see it on YouTube. And YouTube is 60 FPS anyway, so there's no way I can show you that other than just grabbing the phone on my hand and opening the UFO test and following the UFO test. That's actually the only way. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, I just wanna explain you how it works. So for the LG C1, what actually what's happening is that it is doing a rolling a scan to simulate what CRTs used to do. So these TVs draw the picture left to right, top to bottom. So what the C1 does is, is drawing the picture left to right, top to bottom. And once it has 33 to 38% of the frame, so once it shows you that section of the frame, it is a scrolling down, showing you the, the rest of the frame, top to bottom, but the rest is going to be black. So it's basically a section of the frame, and the rest is black, and it's scrolling that down, and the rest is black. So now, why is that superior to just inserting a black frame? Well, it is superior because the smaller that section that the TV is showing you, the... the smaller the persistence is. So the least amount of time we are seeing the frame, that improves the motion because motion clarity based on the Blur Buster's law is limited by persistence, the frame visibility time. So what that means is that the motion clarity of any display technology cannot be better than its persistence. It cannot be. It doesn't matter how fast all its are, the grade to grade, nothing else matters. It cannot go beyond the persistence. That's why these new mon OLED monitors coming out that are 240 hertz or even 480 hertz, if they just support BFI, black frame insertion, the maximum motion clarity, the best motion clarity you can get on those monitors will never exceed the refresh rate of the monitor. For example, 480 hertz, that's four milliseconds of persistence. How do you get that number? One divided by 480 multiplied by 1000. That's how you get those four milliseconds of persistence. So you cannot get it lower than that on those monitors with BFI. But on the LG C1, which is just 120 hertz, thanks to this technology, based on my testing, when using this feature at 120 FPS, 
we get 3.2 milliseconds of persistence, approximately equal to, well, actually equal to three pixels of motion blur when moving at 1,000 pixels per second, okay? And that's because the gray to gray on this OLED is ideal. So it closely follows the Blur Buster's law. That's how good this gets on the C1 at 120, but at 60, the improvement is the same. The improvement is 2.6x. So very simple, on the Samsung, 2x motion clarity improvement. On the LG C1, 2.6x motion clarity improvement. So yeah, the takeaway from this video is the C1 technology is so much better. And unfortunately, LG stopped using this technology for all the wrong reasons. I don't care what they say. It was to, you know, because they wanted to get more brightness because of the pixel aperture ratio or whatever. They removed the hardware necessary for this feature to work. So even if you hack the G4 and install the C1 or G1 firmware, it wouldn't work. You need hardware for that. So in my opinion, they just cheap out because mo most people don't use the feature, uh, especially at 60 because it flickers. But the thing is, at 100 and 120, the flickering is gone completely for me. Okay? Flickering perception depends on the person. And it is amazing. The motion clarity is amazing. So it is a shame that LG removed that feature because on the G4, with all that brightness, it would be amazing. It would be absolutely amazing. And now what we have is this lazy implementation that is just BFI. It's just not the best. That is not the best for LG OLEDs. Not at all. So now the C1 at 60 uh, looks 2.6x better. So it looks like 158 frames and the, the Samsung is like 120. So it's like 120 and 158, that's the difference that you are getting in motion. So that's what's going on here. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna, I'm just disappointed that with the situation that we no longer have this feature available. But even when it is not as good on the Samsung S95C, it is still very good. To, and I'm definitely going to use it. I'm going to share with you the best settings uh, for it because it is still great. When we have color, like here, on camera, they look very similar. This looks brighter, no question about that because the colors are brighter. But in person, the difference is even bigger because that color vibrancy of the QD OLED gives you a higher brightness. It looks like it is brighter because of those more vibrant colors. And that was, uh, that was another reason why I was so excited to have them side by side to see if I was able to notice that difference. Absolutely, the difference is huge because these colors, for example, this yellow color is significantly brighter. So even when the whites are close, you see here this, you know, close to closer, no color basically. They are very close in brightness. When you look at the colors, then that's when, I mean, look at this yellow here, for example. This yellow color here in comparison, this difference is absolutely huge. Absolutely huge. So the feature is still great. It is still great on the QD OLED, but I have to figure out a way to reduce the flickering. I already I already been exploring some some settings that I'm gonna share with you. And you know, just basically getting getting it to look as good as possible. So it's gonna be brighter on the C1 and it's not gonna be as good in motion, but if I can reduce the flickering perception, that's gonna be good enough to use. So why would you use that feature if we have Game Motion Plus? We have on this Samsung QD OLEDs, low latency motion interpolation for gaming. So why would you ever use BFI and get, uh, have to deal with the flickering? Well, 
if you are playing a game that has some ghosting because of TAA, the, load, the motion interpolation is going to amplify the defects, okay? So this is going to be cleaner. You get the same motion clarity as with Game Motion Plus without this, but now you don't have the artifacts, the, the motion interpolation artifacts. So that's a reason. It's definitely a reason to use this clear motion over low latency motion interpolation. So that's why I want to figure out some settings to reduce the flicker. And I already have an idea. It's kind of working, but I'll, I'll share that with you on the next video. I, I still have to, to keep testing some other options, okay? So I'll share with you the settings, give it a try. You might like it. You're gonna lose brightness. It's always going to happen, but the flickering is the, the main thing. If you cannot see the flickering, you will love it because it looks twice as good in motion. So you're sacrificing brightness for motion. Gamers are going to take that in many, many cases, okay? We like the game to look very bright. It looks very nice, but when you're actually playing the game, you're moving all the time, you want a better motion in 2X, the motion that sounds good <laughs> that's very very good uh, so for example imagine someone playing on a pc on a crappy lcd monitor with terrible contrast that's not as bright as this tv at all and having to spend a lot of money to get 120 fps but you with your console or with a lower end gaming pc or with the same high-end pc but pushing a lot higher graphics you can get that same motion clarity but it looks significantly better you know perfect contrast these fantastic colors and you're just sacrificing a little bit of brightness it is a great idea a great idea so i will i will work on it to share some settings so you can give it a try over uh, just a regular inter interpolation for game motion plus so yeah let me know your thoughts and opinions if you use this feature if you like it if you have some settings for it definitely uh, share that uh, with the community and let me know if you have any questions.